Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria, the head witch behind Pahati Life Apothecary. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about the full moon that's happening in the sign of Taurus, which is going to be one of those full moons that creates a shock wave, or should in a lot of ways create a shock wave in your life. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it's going to be for your highest and greatest good. Well, everything happens for your highest and greatest good. But I'm hoping that it feels good. And I think that if you set intention and if that you stay open and flexible, you should be fine with it. But when we have a full moon like this with Uranus sitting directly on top of the moon, representing our emotions, our feelings, and a lot of times connecting us to our intuition, and Uranus being so difficult and hard to predict, Again, it can be so hard for us to predict what can happen, but there's two sides to what can occur and what you can experience, and also ways that you can use this energy in order to create change and transformation within your life in a way that feels good and that reminds you that you are in perfect alignment with your path and that there are no mistakes and that everything happens for a reason. Now, before I go any further, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm very congested right now. <laughs> I am getting over some type of cold or flu or allergy. I'm not really sure what it is. And I was doing well. It's been like a week and a half of feeling probably not this bad, but I was doing well. And then yesterday I went to this garden center and they had chickens there and I, I guess it like irritated my sen my sinuses or whatever, so I've just been kind of struggling with that. So if you hear that, hear me being nasal, that's that's um, the reason for it. Was it worth it? Absolutely. I would totally go back to this chicken farm slash garden center again. But either way, it's kind of making filming a little uh, interesting today. So just bear with me while I, you know, sniffle and have to pause every once in a while in order to sneeze or blow my nose or whatever. Okay, so. TMI, but it is what it is. That being said, let's go ahead and um, pull up the chart and then I'll tell you what it is that I see. Now there's interesting energy that's going on with this, this full moon. And it's the fact that there is a hint towards some type of disruption or change or erratic development or something that is developing either internally within you or around you. It's really hard for me to see it by doing this general reading, but I can see that something is kind of getting kicked up. And the thing is, is this full moon happens in the sign of Taurus. And Taurus is one of the signs of the zodiac that simply doesn't really fare well with change and doesn't like change. In fact, it's the sign that wants to keep, that responsibility is to kind of to keep things steady and consistent and build up whatever it is over the long haul, over the long term, it, it wants to accumulate and it wants to secure wealth. And that's the energy and the vibe of what Taurus brings is, this is what I value, this is what I have. And when we had this full moon happening in the sign of Taurus, but with Uranus sitting in the sign of Taurus, just recently entering into the sign of Taurus, what is happening is, what we value and what we deem important to us or the things that it is that we've exalted or that we've been taking care of or these things that we've been hoarding or holding on to, whether it be actual things, material things, or people, circumstances, places, environments, or a certain way of thinking, all of that is really vulnerable to change. So the North Node falls just recently into the sign of Leo. And the North Node is where it is that we're destined to go where you're destined to go, where I'm destined to go, and where we're all destined to go as a collective consciousness. And when the North Node falls in the sign of Leo, this is connecting to our joy, our pleasure, our ability to receive pleasure, our ability to have fun, our ability to create, our ability to express. And this shows me that anything that is disrupting or that is being disrupted during the time of the full moon, and I really want you guys to be aware of this because these are things that in a lot of ways, they hold us back. And what I'm seeing is a cut and that cut, that release creates your personal freedom so that you now have the ability to go out to seek, to accomplish, to achieve, to experience, to receive all of these blessings, honestly, that the universe has for you. Again, it's for you, it's for me, and it's for all of us collectively because we're all under the same umbrella of this energy that's going on in our skies. Now, one thing that I really want to point out to you is the fact that full moons in general tend to kick up a lot of our emotions because so much of us 
is raw and primal and stripped back and bare. It's really hard to hide anything during the full moon time, which is good and feels bad. It's good because at least you know what it is that you're working with, you know how you feel, and it's just um, you know very authentic, very real. I'm, I'm not sure if there's a better word to describe it besides just real, raw, and authentic. On the flip side, it can be emotionally kind of jarring and mentally jarring because you finally start to see things for what they are because the universe is revealing left and right, this is who this person is, this is how this person feels, this is what this situation looks like, this is who you are to your core. You thought that you were cute, that's adorable because on the inside you're actually crazy and that's every single one of us. I don't know if you guys have seen those shirts before, it's like, I'm cute but psycho but cute. And really it is it's like, yeah, you're cute on the outside, but what are those things inside of you that make you, that drive you crazy, that drive you wild in good ways and in bad? And these are the things that the full moon kind of reveals to us is these little idiosyncrasies that make us tweak, that make us work, and all of a sudden there's boom in our face. And you have to be aware of them, you have to deal with them, you have to observe them. So that's what it is that I'm seeing here. The good news is, is that Mercury is still moving to the sign of Scorpio. And I've been saying this time and time again, I'm almost like a broken record. I'm so sorry if you're tired of hearing me say it, but I'm not going to stop until this energy has completely dissipated and gone away. But there's so much of us right now that we need to kind of dive deeper and to seek and to explore the depths within ourselves, whether we like it or whether we don't. And I know that for many of you guys, you're probably very uncomfortable because you kind of want to stay on a more superficial level. There's nothing wrong with that because staying sometimes on a superficial level means that we don't have to dive so deep into the truth and the reality of our existence and who we are and what we're dealing with and you know what's going on inside of our heads and how that makes us feel emotionally and how that impacts our relationships and how that impacts the amount of abundance we're able to receive and the amount of things that we're able to do and to accomplish. I understand that feeling of, well, I just want to have fun, or I just want to do this, I want to experience this, or this is what my goals are. Why can't I do these things? Scorpio moving, I'm sorry, Mercury moving through the sign of Scorpio, Mercury ruling the mind, Mercury ruling our communication is, is working right now to kind of unearth and reveal skeletons within ourselves. And also it's helping us to better communicate and to express these thoughts that we have, these feelings that we have with others, and then also how we perceive those so that our experience every single day starts to change for the better. Don't forget that Scorpio also rules in a lot of ways death, transformation, and regeneration. So anything that is getting released, anything that is getting observed, anything that is happening during this time has a... Um, a veil around it, has a kind of coating around it that's working to kind of um, eat, away at, eat away at it, kind of like battery acid. That's a really tough metaphor to kind of sit with, but it's the best one that I can think of, which is eating away at this shell of ourselves or eating away at this shell of, you know what, this isn't real, this isn't what you want, this is what you want. So when this starts to happen, you start to become more aware of what is important to you and what it is that you value and what it is that you need versus filling things up with fluff and just pretending like life, you know, coasting by on surface level. Now remember, I said in the very beginning of this video that Taurus connects to value and what we need and our resources. And when Scorpio and Jupiter, and now the Sun, and now Venus, all of these planets are moving through the sign of Scorpio, this is really intense transformative energy. So when we have this full moon representing our emotions and our intuition, and the inner truth and the inner being of ourselves getting disrupted by Uranus, what we have is a total shakeup, a total breakdown. And again, it can come in ways that feels very enlightening and very exciting and like this aha moment of, oh my gosh, this is who I am. I don't need this anymore. I don't want this anymore. Or it can be like getting pushed out of a safe space, something that you deem as safe, and into totally new territory, feeling very emotionally exposed, very emotionally raw. In, in some ways, it's your, your ability to feel safe is questioned. And in a lot of ways, it's very perspective. It's about the perspective of the mind. Do you perceive your environment as something that is safe and stable for you? Or do you see it as something that is threatening your security? And the, the importance of you feeling safe in your environment to express yourself, to relax, 
to recharge your batteries, to be your authentic self. At the end of the day, what is it that is most important to you? These are the things that are going to get highlighted during this full moon. Um, your, your relationships, what those relationships look like, how you spend your money. Instead of buying things that you know just eat a hole in your wallet, um, maybe invest your money and your resources into things that create, again, more security, more stability, and have more value for you in your life. Also, the way that you think about things, the way that you talk, the way that you communicate, is it building deeper connections or is it tearing away of the foundation of those uh, relations, those relationships? What is it that you want? What is it that you need? What is it that you value? And to p support all of this even further, I sat down, of course, um, even with my cold, I still meditate. If anything, when I have a cold or a virus, I spend more time in meditation than I don't because it's just so much easier for me personally. But before I got started with uh, filming this video, I sat down again and like I do anytime I'm doing an energy read and I meditated and these are the two cards that popped up. The full card, which is like I'm not even surprised to see this but it's ruled by the energy of Uranus which is so important within this full moon and the fool card is one of those cards that is really misunderstood because you look at it and you're like oh my god he's such an idiot he's not watching where he's going he doesn't know where he's going everything is so up in the air with him this dog is either barking to warn him or barking to support him you know you're being naive you're being ignorant um, but in reality, what the Fool card says is that so much of uh, what is around us is uh, honestly outside of our control. And what we can control is what we do and how we, re how we react to certain things. And the way that we react to certain things and what we do with what we're perceiving around us is going to change the outcome for our highest and greatest good. Either you let it build you up or you let it break you down. And what I'm seeing here is this total um, entering into this new space, this new territory of peace and support and really kind of letting go and stripping. The Fool card is one of those cards that's very lightweight. He's not carrying any burdens that are going to hold him back and hinder him in any way, shape, or form. And that's what I'm seeing within this chart when I'm pulling the chart is what is it that you need, what is it that you value, what is it that you have to have on you. And if it's weighing you down, it's time for you to release it, it's time for you to let go. The Fool card, again, does not carry anything that doesn't serve a purpose and have a meaning to it and doesn't have a value to it. If it's not important to you, why are you carrying it? If it is important to you but it's creating emotional heartache and weighing you down emotionally. It's time for you to release it and to let go and to be completely free of that. That's what the Fool card represents. It's not that he's ignorant. It's not that he's naive. He's just completely wiped free and innocent of anything that would hold him back. And the brilliant thing about this is that when he's in this space to be free and to be unrestrained and unrestricted from these things that have happened to him in the past, He's then able to have these like aha awakening moments of this is where I need to be, this is where I need to go, this is what I need to experience, this is how I can get there. Because the Fool card and the energy of this um, full moon, although it's falling in the sign of Taurus, which is ruled by Venus, who is currently retrograde, Uranus is, is very much a part and very much an important piece and aspect of this full moon. And Uranus is the, the, the sign of... I'm sorry, Uranus is the planet that rules this quick thinking and this quick advancement, a quick development of ways of ways of you know realizing and changing your circumstances in from the ways that were originally once holding you back and holding you shackled and holding you restrained. That's why Uranus rules the energy of the Fool card because it's all about look, we need to explore, we need to get out there. And when we do that, we are able to advance ourselves, our partners, people who are around us, our society, our whole world, just by being completely unrestrained, unrestricted. Now, I don't want to ignore the fact that the, the swords card is here. And I listen to the message of the sword card because I'm currently sick and dealing with whatever it is that I'm dealing with now with my health or whatever. But um, And it's all about rest and allowing others to take care of you and allowing you to take care of yourself and sometimes if it's not that you actually need physical sleep and physical rest or a vacation or a brief moment whether it be meditation or a vacation um whatever it is it's you know taking some time 
to, to be still in all of this chaos and all of this um, change that's happening around us and also internally within us. And that's going to help us to kind of let the dust settle so that we can see, so that we can feel what is truly most important to us and not this like fluffy stuff that's just taking up space and clouding our vision and clouding our path and clouding our perspective. And when it's clouding all those things, it's also simultaneously blocking our blessings, okay? So that's what it is that I'm seeing. I'm seeing a total purge, a total release, a total sim simple life, a total minimalistic um, life, which is funny because that's what I'm doing here in New Orleans, but it's just this like release and getting rid of and cutting anything that doesn't serve you in order to make space and room for things that do. And the aha moments that happen to you when you're not being distracted by bullshit and things that don't serve a purpose in your life. So I hope that makes sense, you guys. Um, one last thing I want to say before I go is, you know what, um, follow your joy. Like, what is it that really makes you happy? And I don't mean superficial happiness, but what is it that really makes you fall asleep and have this huge smile on your face? Those are the things that are important. Anything else is just a distraction. And it's really important that you feel joy every day. Meaning like it's not fake, but that you're prioritizing what makes your heart and your soul and your spirit soar and have joy and that and makes you very grateful. If you are going to bed at the end of the day or if you're ending your day and you're um, worn out, tired, exhausted in a way that's just like defeating versus, you know, filling. Because there's a difference between going to bed exhausted, just being like, oh my God, today was amazing versus, oh my God. How am I going to do this tomorrow? You know what I mean? Those are two different levels of exhaustion. So what I want to see is you getting out and finding the things that make your heart truly happy, that put a smile on your face, that, and it's an authentic joy, and that everything that you do, you're operating from a space of gratitude, a frequency that is really, really high. That's what gratitude brings you to is that higher, higher level of frequency because that's going to change your life in so many different ways. And if you're not there, set the intention for that during this full moon because this is the full moon to do it. All right, so I'm going to go take the dog for a walk because she's getting restless. But thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.